It's a shocking scene that witnesses say seemed like it was ripped right out of the movies. Each second matters when a robbery is ongoing. The more skilled and experienced the thief, the less time they need to execute the perfect heist. In one case, a thief stole $109 million worth of jewelry in just 27 seconds. Unbelievable, right? And that's just one example. We've compiled a list of the smartest and fastest thefts in history. So buckle up as we take a tour through some of the smartest thieves in history. The Dubai Heist in 2007, the bustling city of Dubai witnessed one of its most shocking heists at the Wafi Mall. It was an audacious robbery that unfolded like a scene from a high-octane action movie, and it happened in a flash, only 170 seconds. Onlookers had barely registered the commotion before it was all over. Around midday, two cars, both stolen luxury vehicles, smashed through the mall's glass entrance in rapid succession. Each car maneuvered with such precision that it seemed rehearsed. The vehicles barreled toward the high-end jewelry store, parting crowds who stared in shock and disbelief. One man jumped out of the first car, his eyes scanning his surroundings. His posture was calm, but menacing. With a fake gun in hand, which was only later revealed to be a plastic replica, his role was to guard the area, ensuring that nobody would try to intervene. Behind him, the second car continued forward, smashing into the jewelry store's glass facade with a shattering force. The windows broke, and the screeching sound of glass against metal echoed across the mall. drawing the attention of mall goers from all around. Within seconds, one of the robbers got to work inside the store, swinging a hammer to break into the display cases. Glass flew everywhere as he shattered each display with swift, precise movements. While most shoppers fled or ducked for cover, others watched in astonishment as these men methodically looted $3.4 million worth of diamond necklaces, bracelets, rings, and other jewelry. The entire operation had been carefully planned down to the smallest detail. From the moment they smashed into the mall until their escape, the robbers didn't waste a second, ensuring they were gone before anyone could react. As the heist concluded, the thieves sped out of the mall, leaving behind a trail of glass shards and a crowd stunned by the unfolding drama. The stolen vehicles were later discovered burned along Zabil Road, eliminating any traces of evidence. This clever tactic not only bought the robbers time, but also thwarted any immediate investigative leads. It soon emerged that this heist was the work of the infamous international gang known as the Pink Panthers, a highly skilled group notorious for carrying out meticulously planned jewelry heists across the world. The heist in Dubai wasn't their only feat, but it was one of the most memorable. After the heist, authorities quickly launched a full-scale investigation. Dubai police, known for their quick response and efficiency, managed to catch two suspects who were about to flee the city. However, it took years before the third suspect was finally apprehended. In 2014, he was located in Spain and subsequently extradited to the UAE the following year. This final arrest brought some closure to the case, but it was clear that the Pink Panthers had once again left a significant mark on Dubai's history. Today, a charred remnant of one of the getaway cars stands on display in the Dubai Police Museum, a stark reminder of the gang's bold tactics and the swift action taken by Dubai's law enforcement. However, this is still the slowest theft case compared to the other cases of our list. Before we move on to the next cases, take a look at this photo. Here, three thieves wearing Joker masks are attempting to cut open the locker of what appears to be either a jewelry store or an exhibition. Now, the big question is, is this real CC25 footage or just a scene from a movie? Well, as it turns out, this was a failed theft attempt that took place back in 2019. But here's the twist. What they confessed after their arrest was nothing short of shocking. They admitted they were inspired by the Money Heist series. So, what do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Can Carlton Hotel Heist? 
Now this one is the main case we highlighted at the beginning. In 2013, the glamorous Carlton Hotel in Cannes became the scene of one of the most daring jewelry heists in recent history. Known for hosting international celebrities and industry icons during the Cannes Film Festival. The Carlton Hotel on the French Riviera is a magnet for wealth and luxury. With its lavish surroundings and scenic views of the Mediterranean, it seemed like an ideal location for an upscale jewelry exhibition. Unfortunately, it also presented a perfect target for an audacious thief. This story began with an exclusive exhibition by Leviev Diamond House, a renowned jeweler owned by Israeli billionaire Lev Leviev, who was showcasing his finest diamond pieces. These weren't ordinary jewels. They included high carat diamonds, intricate necklaces, and rare sought-after stones. It was a grand event meant to display wealth and opulence. But the allure of these treasures also drew the wrong kind of attention. On that fateful day, a man calmly walked into the Carlton Hotel in broad daylight. He wore a face mask and carried a gun, blending into the crowd of tourists and hotel guests. Without a word, he pointed his weapon at the staff and demanded they hand over the jewels. Under threat, the hotel employees complied, loading millions of dollars worth of diamonds into his bag. Incredibly, the entire heist took place in just 27 seconds. The thief then slipped out of the hotel and disappeared into the bustling promenade outside, vanishing as if he'd never been there. Initially, hotel staff estimated the stolen jewel's value to be around $43 million. However, upon reviewing their inventory, the staff realized they had underestimated the scale of the loss. In total, the thief made off with around $109 million worth of jewelry, a figure that put this heist among the most valuable in history. John O'Connor, a former head of the British police force, described the thief's escape strategy as a classic way of getting away with it. By slipping into the crowd along the seafront, he blended in seamlessly, making it nearly impossible for anyone to track him. It was a brilliant piece of utterly simplistic, easy robbery, he noted. The police quickly mobilized and launched a high-stakes investigation, suspecting that this wasn't the work of an amateur. They believed the thief might be linked to the Pink Panthers, a notorious gang famous for executing swift and daring heists around the world. The Pink Panthers have been known for their snatch-and-grab style of robberies where they swoop in, take what they need, and vanish without a trace. Their criminal expertise is legendary, with members often planning elaborate escape routes and timing each job down to the second. This suspicion grew even stronger when authorities recalled that, just days before the heist, one of the gang's most infamous members, Milan Poporic, had escaped from a Swiss jail with help from his associates. The escape itself was dramatic. Fellow gang members rammed through the prison gates with a vehicle and fired AK-47s at the guards, enabling Poporic to flee. Poporic's escape brought intense international attention to the Pink Panthers, whose members were already under watch for high-profile robberies across Europe. To recover the stolen jewels, police launched a priority investigation and offered a $1.3 million reward for any information leading to the jewelry's return. They also circulated images of the pieces, hoping that their unique designs would make them difficult to sell and eventually surface on the black market. Despite these efforts, however, no leads have emerged and the Carlton Hotel heist remains unsolved. The London Robbery London's famed New Bond Street, known for its exclusive boutiques and luxury brands, became the scene of a brazen heist in 2009. Graf Diamonds, one of the most prestigious jewelers in the city, was the target, and this robbery became one of the boldest in recent memory. The robbers were no ordinary criminals. They had gone to exceptional lengths to disguise themselves and blend in. Two men arrived dressed in sharp suits, posing as wealthy customers, but their appearance was not what it seemed. In fact, they had visited a professional makeup artist beforehand, claiming they were filming a music video and needed to look unrecognizable. The disguise was so realistic that one of the robbers joked, Even my own mother wouldn't recognize me now. At exactly 4.40 p.m., they entered the store. It was a bustling time of day, with the shop filled with staff and clients browsing luxury jewelry items. Calmly and confidently, the men strolled in, 
blending effortlessly with the high-end clientele Graf Diamonds typically attracted. However, as soon as they were in position, they drew handguns, shattering the calm atmosphere. With firm commands, they ordered everyone to the floor, their tone leaving no room for hesitation. The staff complied, stunned by the sudden transformation from polite customers to armed robbers. One robber directed a shop assistant to unlock the display cabinets, carefully selecting the highest value items as the other robber kept watch. Within moments, they had collected an impressive haul. Diamond earrings, sparkling necklaces, and glittering rings worth a staggering $65 million. Time was ticking, and they knew every second counted. The police could arrive at any moment, and so they planned a dramatic exit. Taking a shop assistant as a hostage to clear their way, they stepped outside and fired a warning shot into the air. The sound reverberated through the street, scattering pedestrians and clearing a path. In a carefully orchestrated escape, they switched cars three times in less than half a mile to throw off any pursuit. The jewels were transferred to an accomplice waiting on a motorcycle, making it nearly impossible for law enforcement to track their movements accurately. Their escape was a textbook example of precision and coordination, worthy of a cinematic heist sequence. However, in their rush to flee, one of the robbers made a critical mistake. He left his cell phone behind in one of the getaway cars. This single error unraveled their meticulously planned operation, providing the police with a direct lead. Using this evidence, authorities managed to track down and arrest the robber. Although two men were eventually charged and brought to justice, the stolen jewelry, valued at millions, was never recovered. Tacoma's Military-Style Bank Robbery in the usually calm city of Tacoma, Washington, a shocking military-style bank heist played out like a Hollywood thriller, taking both police and bystanders by surprise. The robbery at a Bank of America branch on August 7, 2006, involved a former soldier, Luke Elliott Summer, who brought intense military training and precise planning into civilian life. The heist Summer orchestrated was far from a spur-of-the-moment crime. He had served tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, acquiring skills and experience that gave him a unique edge. And he wasn't looking to make a quick buck. His ambition was to build an empire of crime. Summer's plan was thorough and calculated, with a clear goal of showing both skill and power. His choice of team and the weapons they carried into the Bank of America branch that day spoke volumes about the preparation that had gone into the heist. Summer recruited three accomplices, all prepared to play out their roles with military precision. Two of the men carried AK-47 assault rifles stationed at the entrance to intimidate anyone who might think of interfering. The other two, including Summer himself, carried handguns and took control inside the bank. Dressed in body armor, the team operated with a chilling level of calm and control. Summer himself was dressed head-to-toe in tactical gear, which reflected the military background he brought to his new mission. The crew had a precise demand. They instructed the tellers to hand over cash, but were very particular about the denominations. They refused traceable bills, and every step was meant to leave no room for error. With this precision, the crew managed to gather $54,000 in a staggering 2 minutes and 21 seconds. The speed and control of the operation made it appear that they would slip away without a trace. But in the rush to make a quick escape, the team made a critical mistake. Summer and his crew had thought of everything, or so they thought. They had gear, weapons, and a well-rehearsed plan. But they overlooked a key detail. The getaway car still had its license plate attached. This seemingly minor oversight would turn out to be the thread that unraveled their entire operation. A sharp-eyed bystander noticed the license plate and, realizing something was amiss, reported it to the authorities. The lead brought investigators to one of Summer's accomplices and eventually led them straight to Summer himself. Once caught, Summer's motives came to light, and the truth was more ambitious and disturbing than anyone expected. Summer wasn't just looking for a cash payout, he was planning to use the funds from the heist to finance a criminal enterprise in Canada. His grand vision was to build an organized crime syndicate that would rival Canada's notorious Hells Angels. For Summer, the robbery was just the beginning. 
He had visions of building a powerful gang and even intended to recruit other military-trained individuals for future heists and operations, believing his military background gave him a unique advantage in the world of crime. The arrest, however, didn't stop Sommer's ambitious and dangerous plans. After he was taken into custody, he attempted to orchestrate another scheme, this time to ensure his freedom by force. Summer tried to hire a hitman from inside the prison to eliminate the attorney responsible for his prosecution. Summer believed that without the attorney, he could disrupt his case and possibly gain an edge in his fight for freedom. But in a twist that would seal his fate even further, Summer's hitman turned out to be an undercover FBI agent. His plot backfired, adding an additional 20 years to his sentence. The Tacoma Bank heist was ultimately a lesson in the limits of military precision and criminal ambition. Despite Summer's intense preparation and his team's execution of the robbery, they couldn't escape the crucial mistake that led to their downfall. The bystanders' quick action and the work of law enforcement officers brought down what could have been the beginning of a dangerous criminal syndicate. Summer's military background and bold aspirations gave the heist a particular intensity, and his plans to build a criminal empire echoed the ambitions of famous crime bosses. His desire to use former soldiers to create an elite criminal network underscored his vision for an organized operation, unlike the average street gang. In his mind, Summer was building something with structure and purpose, something he believed would make him untouchable. Yet his capture was swift, proving that even the most well-thought-out plans can unravel in a moment. Hong Kong Heist In the bustling city of Hong Kong, three masked thieves pulled off a lightning-fast heist, stealing $3 million in luxury jewelry in just 90 seconds. The robbery took place on a busy morning in July 2018, right in the heart of the Tsim Sha Tsuiers shopping district, a popular destination for tourists and locals alike, known for its luxury boutiques and high-end stores. At 10.45 a.m., as crowds filled the streets, the robbers stormed into VIP Watch and Jewelry, a store famous for its high-end watches and fine jewelry. Without a word, the masked men began their operation. Armed with a knife and a retractable baton, they shattered glass display cases with ease, filling bags with valuable goods. They focused on grabbing the most expensive items first, Swiss-made watches and American luxury bracelets. In total, they took 34 luxury watches and 39 high-end bracelets, all worth a combined 23.5 million Hong Kong dollars, or roughly 3 million US dollars. Each item they stole represented careful targeting. They knew exactly what they wanted and how quickly they needed to act. The chaos escalated when a store employee, who was on a phone call at the time, caught the attention of one of the robbers. Possibly fearing he was calling for help, the robbers injured him, adding a sense of real danger to an already intense situation. Within moments, the thieves dashed out of the store, weaving through the bustling district and heading toward Lock Road, where a stolen getaway car awaited. The getaway car, a vital piece of the plan, was found to have been stolen months earlier, showing the robbers' meticulous planning. Police suspected that the robbers used multiple handoffs, passing off the stolen goods to accomplices along the way, likely fleeing across the border to mainland China to avoid being caught. A few weeks later, police made significant progress. They arrested the three main robbers, along with the girlfriend of one of the men, but incredibly, none of the stolen jewelry was ever recovered. The heist was one of the quickest and most efficient robberies in Hong Kong's recent history, leaving the city in shock and reminding jewelers across the region of the risks they face daily. Paris Robbery of a Saudi Prince In 2014, Paris was rocked by a heist that seemed straight out of a thriller. But this was no movie scene. It was all too real. The target wasn't a store or an exhibition, but a high-profile Saudi prince. Prince Abdulaziz bin Fahd, known for his immense wealth and influence within Saudi Arabia, had been staying at the luxurious Four Seasons George V Hotel, located in the heart of Paris. This hotel is no stranger to the elite, and it was the perfect place for the prince to unwind during his stay in the City of Lights. 
On the morning of the robbery, as his convoy prepared to leave the hotel and head to the airport, eight masked men, driving sleek BMWs, set their plan into motion. With military precision, they positioned themselves along a carefully chosen stretch of road, one that was likely scouted in advance. It became clear that this was no random act of theft. The operation was meticulously planned down to the smallest detail. These thieves knew exactly where they would intercept the convoy and how they would execute the robbery. The ambush unfolded quickly. As the convoy made its way along the route, the robbers sprung into action. They surrounded the lead vehicle in a matter of seconds, forcing the occupants to exit the car at gunpoint. With swift movements, they took control of the vehicle, ensuring no one had time to react. The vehicle itself contained a small fortune, roughly $335,000, luxury watches worth millions, and confidential documents belonging to Prince Abdul Aziz. As the robbers made their escape, the entire heist lasted less than a minute, leaving the authorities in shock. This wasn't just a brazen act of theft, it was a well-orchestrated operation. The high-stakes nature of the crime, targeting a member of one of the wealthiest families in the world, raised several questions. How did the robbers know exactly where the prince's convoy would be? How did they know about the cash, the luxury watches, and the confidential documents inside the car? This led to the suspicion that the robbers had insider knowledge. Could someone within the prince's circle have tipped them off? Were there any leaks or connections between the prince's security team and the robbers? These questions were at the forefront of the investigation. The French authorities took the case very seriously, aware that the level of professionalism exhibited during the robbery pointed to a highly skilled criminal organization. Some believe that this heist bore the hallmarks of the notorious Pink Panthers, a gang known for executing calculated, precise robberies across the world. The Pink Panthers are infamous for their elaborate heists, particularly targeting wealthy individuals and their assets. The precision with which the heist was carried out, along with the target itself, seemed to fit their modus operandi. However, others believe that this heist wasn't connected to the Pink Panthers and that it might have been an independent operation altogether, carried out by a different group of thieves with similar expertise. The investigation spanned several months, and French law enforcement dug deep into the robbery, trying to trace the escape route and gather evidence. As they analyzed security footage from the area, witness testimonies, and other clues, they began to piece together the story behind the crime. By the following year, nine suspects had been arrested in connection with the robbery. Some of the suspects were known criminals with ties to international heist networks, adding further fuel to the theory that the Pink Panthers could have been involved. However, despite the arrests, the full details of the heist remained shrouded in mystery. The robbers' exact motivations and how they had gathered their intelligence remained unclear. Some experts speculated that this robbery might have been part of a larger trend of increasingly sophisticated heists carried out by professional gangs targeting high-profile individuals and their families. The way in which the thieves knew exactly what the prince was carrying, combined with their execution of the crime, indicated a level of organization and planning that few could match. New Jersey Jewelry Heist Back in the United States in New Jersey's Little India, a group of robbers carried out one of the fastest and boldest jewelry heists in recent memory. It was June 2022, and just before closing time at 7.45 p.m., eight armed robbers stormed into Varani Jewelers, known for its luxurious Indian jewelry and popular with shoppers across the East Coast. The robbers didn't waste a second. Brandishing guns and a hammer, they shattered the glass cases, grabbing every valuable item within reach. In a minute, they had filled their bags with over $1 million worth of jewelry. Their calmness under pressure, as witnesses later described, was unsettling. The robbers seemed almost relaxed as they methodically executed their plan. Customers and employees alike were stunned by the speed and coordination of the heist. Fortunately, no one was injured, but the psychological impact on those present was lasting. Many shoppers and local business owners were left shaken by the brazen nature of the robbery, raising fears about security in a district known for its vibrant shopping scene. Despite extensive investigations, the robbers managed to disappear without a trace. 
Authorities suspect the group had carefully scouted the location, waiting until just before closing to minimize the chance of resistance or intervention. For now, both the robbers and the stolen goods remain at large, leaving Varani jewelers and the surrounding community on edge. Tokyo Necklace Heist In 2004, Tokyo became the stage for one of the city's most notorious jewelry heists, the theft of the Comtesse de Vendôme necklace. Valued at an astonishing $31 million, this necklace was more than just a collection of gems. It contained 116 diamonds, crowned by an ultra-rare 125-carat diamond at its center. The meticulous planning behind this heist would give Hollywood a run for its money. The thieves, posing as ordinary customers, visited the high-end boutique a few days before the heist. They scoped out the security measures, carefully noting details about the piece they would soon steal. On March 5th, two men returned with two accomplices, pretending to be genuinely interested in the necklace. One of the men kept the staff occupied with casual questions, while another pulled out pepper spray and used it to disorient the employees, making it impossible for anyone to act. Then, without hesitation, they smashed the glass display, grabbed the necklace, and bolted. The entire operation took under 40 seconds, a near-flawless execution. In a bold escape, the robbers jumped onto motorcycles, zipping through the streets before anyone could react. Japanese authorities launched one of the largest investigations in Tokyo's history, involving over a hundred officers. Yet, despite their efforts, the robbers managed to slip out of Japan using fake Croatian and Czech passports. Later, two suspects were captured and jailed, but they refused to reveal the location of the priceless necklace. Many believe that the necklace was dismantled, with its diamonds recut, and sold individually on the black market to evade tracking. The Comtesse de Vendôme remains a mystery to this day, a ghost of Tokyo's past hidden somewhere in the shadowy world of underground gems. Brooklyn Jewelry Heist in January 2023, a brazen jewelry heist stunned Park Slope. Brooklyn, Facets Jewelry, a high-end store known for its exclusive pieces, became the target of a swift and violent robbery that netted the thieves $2 million in precious jewels. The incident, which unfolded around 5 p.m., was a coordinated attack by three masked men who stormed the store with a terrifying sense of purpose. The robbers, each with a distinct role, wasted no time. One man pulled a hammer from his pocket, an unusual tool for a heist, and used it to smash three main display cases. Another robber filled bags with jewelry, focusing on the most valuable pieces, including custom diamond engagement rings and vintage Art Deco and Edwardian designs. The third man stayed near the entrance as a lookout, ensuring no one could disrupt their operation. All of this took only 38 seconds. Store owner Irina Sulai recounted the nightmare, saying, It's terrifying. I couldn't even talk afterward. I was shaking, crying, just in complete shock. The robber's chilling threat to shoot anyone who moved left her and her staff frozen in fear. We're not doing anything. We're just quiet. We didn't, none of us said a word. Sulay described the robbers as incredibly prepared, knowing exactly which cases to target and what to take focusing solely on high-ticket items. This heist also highlighted a unique challenge for high-end jewelers who have to evaluate each person requesting entry to the store. Though many stores employ restricted access, Sule had chosen to give the benefit of the doubt. This decision, though made out of trust, left her devastated and wary of even her most loyal clients. Since the incident, the store has installed heightened security measures and hired a guard to protect against future threats. Despite extensive police efforts, no arrests have been made and the culprits remain at large, leaving the people of Brooklyn to wonder if they'll strike again. Hong Kong Window Smash and Grab Now here is another Hong Kong story at the end. In 2017, the bustling streets of Tsim Sha Tsui in Hong Kong were the unlikely setting for one of the quickest and most efficient heists in recent memory. Here, in the heart of a busy shopping district, Chow Sang Sang Jewelry Store became the target of a lightning-fast smash-and-grab robbery, one that was executed with precision and almost shocking ease. The heist began when two masked thieves approached the store's display window, which showcased a collection of high-end jewelry. Without setting foot inside the store, the robbers used sledgehammers to shatter the thick glass. 
The sound of glass breaking startled passers-by, who could only watch in shock as the robbers reached through the broken window and filled a bag with millions of dollars worth of jewelry. The entire event took just 10 seconds, fast enough that even if a store clerk had managed to call the police immediately, the robbers would have already escaped. The stolen items included a diamond necklace, jade earrings, a diamond bracelet, and several diamond rings, all high-value items. Security footage captured the robbers wearing hats and face masks, making it difficult to identify them. Witnesses noted that the thieves didn't appear to be ethnically Chinese, which led police to speculate they might have been part of an international gang, possibly seasoned in this kind of high-stakes theft. A third accomplice was waiting nearby on a motorbike, ready to whisk them away through the crowded Hong Kong streets. Within seconds, the trio had disappeared, leaving store staff and witnesses stunned by the rapid and efficient robbery. By the time the police arrived, the robbers were long gone. Months later, an unexpected discovery added a twist to the story. A cleaner walking through Kowloon Park, just 150 meters from the jewelry store, noticed a sparkling object on the ground. She picked it up, assuming it was costume jewelry, but soon realized it was a diamond ring. Recognizing the ring's connection to the recent robbery, she chose to do the right thing and report her find to the police. While her honesty earned her gratitude from the jewelry store, no additional pieces have been recovered, and the robbers have never been found. These are all for today. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want more of such content. Soon we will be back with another spine-chilling episode. Till then, enjoy our other videos.